Hey guys, it's Matt with 731 Woodworks. I'm in the shop today with my wife who's running the camera and my shop dog Zeus, the poodle. Uh, today we're gonna to be building a noodle board. I never heard of a noodle board until yesterday when my wife brought it up and said, hey, we should build a noodle board. So today we're building a noodle board and I'm gonna video it and show you what those are. So if you wanna know what a noodle board is and what you can do with your noodle board, stay tuned and I'll show you how to build it. All right, so making the noodle board, first thing we gotta do is join the bottom of it. Uh, so a noodle board, I'm gonna give a little secret away, is it goes on top of your stove. And is this the top? So what you wanna do is you're gonna drill into the bottom I'm using a Craig K5 pocket jig. You can use a K4 or R3. Mousecraft makes a pocket hole jig. You can use any one you want, but I'm using the K5. Uh, so I got my depth set to three quarters of an inch, which is what our stock is. And then I also have my bit already set, this uh, stop, stop block. So what I want to do is just drill me about four holes across here so that we can join this, uh, this bottom together. All right, so I got my pocket holes drilled. I got my pieces cut to a rough length. What it is, I went and measured the top of my stove. And the top of my stove is uh, 29 and 3 quarters. I cut this 30 and a quarter inches because what I want to do is take it to the table saw and rip one edge off so that we get a good square edge after everything's uh, put together. So basically you're just making a tabletop or how I make my tabletops with pocket holes. You just use this pocket hole jig. We're gonna square everything up. I got an inch and a quarter screws I'm gonna use, Craig screws, for the three quarter inch stock. And then I'm also gonna run a bit of glue in here in the, in the middle just to give it a little uh, extra there. Well, mainly what I'm gonna do is line up this one edge, put the pocket holes in, and then we'll take it to the table saw and cut it to the correct size. All right, so here you see me using the inch and a quarter Craig screws to secure these four boards together. A 36 inch clamp just to hold everything tight. And I put a little bit of tight bond too in the gaps just to help. All right, so now that we got our, our base fixed with our pocket holes, we're gonna rip off this edge and make it square. I've got my miter gauge here and I'm just gonna line everything up and just take the very edge off this uh, board and then we'll measure the width to get the proper width we're wanting. So I cut an eighth inch off this side and then I used my fence to set the width of my stove to get my final cut. Alright so if you notice on that last time lapse when I was ripping that edge of this uh, board off I had forgotten that I needed to allow an inch and a half for this uh, three quarter inch stock on each side so you saw that I that I done that so instead of 29 and three quarters wide is what my stove is I wind up going 28 and a quarter because I got to put a piece of this on each side of it for handles. All right, so I've got my edge pieces cut, uh, the back and the two edges. And now what my wife has done is drawn a rough area where she wants to uh, make a little design in this sideboard. And then we're gonna cut a hole back here for your hand to go in. So I'll be able to pick this up off the stove when you wanna use your stove. But right now I'm gonna, I'm going to try to uh, cut this out with my jigsaw the best I can, then we can take a sander and smooth everything out. Once I get this piece cut, I'm going to lay it on the other edge piece and design that uh, same design on there and cut that out also. If you, if you don't have a jigsaw, you can take your uh, circular saw or your uh, miter saw or whatever, and you can just cut a, an angle on this end or a couple of angles if you want to do it that way, or you can leave them square. It's up to you totally. So here I'm just using my jigsaw to cut that design my wife drew. All right, so we had a little uh-oh. So we cut this a little short when it's flush with the back. We got this corner sticking up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrap this piece. We're gonna do another piece where it doesn't, uh, where it covers that up. That way it'll, when it comes down on this angle, we're at the same level or just above that. So we don't have that. All right, so now we're gonna, we need some handles in this thing. So what I've got is just a uh, one inch hole saw bit. It's actually an inch and a half hole saw bit. So I'm going to drill a hole here and then one down here a little bit and I'm going to take my router and with an edge guide and we're going to make a good clean oval hole hopefully. See how this works. Alright so now I'm going to cut the holes out for handles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in a uh, just a hole saw bit. It's an inch and a half hole saw bit. Uh, we tried the first one and drill two holes one on this side, one on that side, and then I was gonna connect the middle with the router uh, straight bit, and that doesn't work out very well. So I'm chunking this piece. Jumps out. Now, 
Now this one we did right. We did a hole on the side, hole on that side, and we took a jigsaw and just basically connected the dots. So that's what we're going to do here. Then we'll have two handles for our two side pieces, and once that's done, we can start assembling it. I just drill these two holes and then connect the dots with my jigsaw. It makes a nice oval hole. And then we clamp those two pieces together and use a belt sander to make everything match. And then I used a quarter inch roundover bit and rounded up over uh, the holes there to make everything smooth and then a quick sand we was ready to assemble. All right, so we got all our pieces cut out, uh, our both sides, we got the back and we got the bottom. And then everything's attached except for the sides and the back. So that's what we're doing now. So what I did, I didn't film this, but I've got pocket holes, uh, three on each side and four in the back. Because when we lay these up here, you can get them, we're gonna flush the front and the back's gonna be uh, sticking over three quarters because that other back piece will be right here and that'll take care of that. So what we're doing now is we're gonna attach the sides and the back with these uh, inch and a quarter pocket screws and just a little bit of glue. You don't need a lot of glue. You don't have to use glue, but it, on something like this, but it, it works a lot better. If you, I mean, it, it just helps. It gives it that extra bonding and uh, it never hurts to have a little bit of glue. So. I'm just putting a little glue around this edge. I know it's end grain we're gluing, but it's better than nothing. Main thing is you're gonna start at the front and I'm gonna work my way back. I'm just gonna make sure this is flushed on the front. And once this is flush on the front and the bottom, then I'll put that pocket screw in there. I probably should have clamped this, it would have helped a lot, but I was trying to do the video and show you how it's going together. I may have to stop it and go to a clamp, but you get the idea. So make sure you want the front flushed up and the bottom flushed. All right, so we've made a noodle board. So this is what the bottom looks like. You see all those pocket holes and stuff uh, attaching the end or the edge boards, the top side is just uh, these one these are one by sixes and these are one by fours I didn't mention that earlier so I'll, after we get this painted I think we're gonna paint it black correct we're gonna paint it black and then distress it so this goes on top of your stove and then we're gonna paste wax it right after we get through uh, distressing it just to give it a seal uh, you can put your decorations up here and then before you cook you just pick this up and you'll move it over to your counter and then of course, after the stove is cool, you put it back. Don't put it on top of a hot stove. This is wood, it'll burn. So just a little tip there. And then all the tools I use, or a lot of the tools I use, I'll leave the links to those in the comment or in the description below. They are affiliate links, which means I get a small commission if you click that link and buy the product, but it adds no cost to you. It's just, it's just Amazon links. And it just helps me to uh, be able to make these videos and maintain my website at 731woodworks.com. All right, so we originally was going to do black, but we decided to do a distressed look. So we painted an espresso brown, and then we went back over it with a biscuit white, let that dry, and then we sanded this with 120 grit on an orbital sander. My wife does a really good job of distressing. It makes it look really nice. After that, we uh, used Valspar antiquing wax, mixed it with a little bit of Johnson's paste wax, and you wipe that on and then rub it off before it dries, and it gives it a nice satin sheen. Uh, it also seals it. So this is our finished product, our noodle board. And uh, so we got our handles and everything made. We, we got the final wax coat on top of it, uh, just to, for a look, it's not to, to um, make it food safe. These aren't, this is not a food safe thing. I wouldn't cut on this or, or make noodles on it. Uh, but this is just a good thing to put on your stove for decoration. You can put some extra pot holders up there and leave that up there. And they're, they're very light. And just very simple to move. You just pick them up and move them off of your stove. Uh, on the bottom of them, we've got some sticky felt pads to keep it from scarring or scratching your stove at all. But this is, is it's just a handy piece to have in the kitchen and it also makes it look uh, really nice. It's a rustic uh, farmhouse. We just stressed this one. And you notice we called an audible there. We were going to paint it black and we decided to paint it brown and then the top coat with a biscuit white and then distress it. So this is our. Uh, our new item we're come out with uh, my wife saw one on uh, facebook and knew we could do it so 
We built this today, and this will be a new fixture in our kitchen. Thank you for watching. I'll post some pictures after this, show the several pictures of this final product. We absolutely love this in our kitchen now. It adds a lot of functionality, being able to store that stuff on top. It also looks really, really nice in there. We'd love to know what you think about this. Please drop us a comment letting us know. You can see more pictures of this on our website at 731woodworks.com. We thank you so much for watching.